Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends. It's your buddy Boogeyman Ben here for another episode of Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. And, and this review uh, that I'm doing today is long overdue. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Split Image. This is The Life of Anthony Perkins. This is a book that I read probably, I finished it about a month ago. I think it was right before Memorial Day that I finished this book. And I've been wanting to do a review um, on this book uh, since that time, and I just haven't found the time or the motivation to talk about it. Um, to give a little history about how long I've had this book, this book was written, I believe, 20 years ago. I was going to San Francisco State um, 20 years ago. I started there as, uh, I changed majors, but um, I started there as a journalism major and ended up becoming a film major. Um, and uh, uh, when I first started going there, I had to go, of course, purchase my uh, textbooks. I was in the, 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 the store, the student store. Um, and I noticed that there was a book about Anthony Perkins. Now, at this point, uh, he had been dead for four years. And, of course, you know, at that time, I was 22 years old. Um, I knew, you know, that he was closeted, uh, a closeted gay man. Um, he eventually did find love with Barry Berenson and have two kids. But I knew about that at an early age when I was very impressionable, so I was scared of the fact that he was gay because, of course, back then, you know, it just, it's not what it is now. And those, I never was, you know, I, I don't know if you'd call me homophobic when I was a kid, but I have to admit I was, um, you know, nervous around gay people because I felt like the fact that I liked him so much and I found, uh, respected him so much and was so into his work at a very young age. Um, and the fact that he, you know, had died of AIDS. Um, I was just such a, that was such a fan of his growing up. Um, I felt like, what did it say about me? And of course, you know, as a kid, that's just what you do. Um, now I'm a lot older and, and, and I don't even think that way anymore. But when I bought this book, I was nervous about reading it because I didn't want to taint the image of Perkins that I had in my head. Um, and, uh, I did read, I think I skimmed this book more as, than anything as a kid. Um, I don't think I really just delved into it and read it. Um, and the book is written by, uh, Charles Weinkoff. Um, the one thing that I've always known about this book, even going so far back as, you know, back into the mid nineties was that, uh, Barry Berenson and Oz, Osgood and Elvis Perkins had nothing to do with this book. They, he did not, I, they didn't cooperate with him. I don't know all the details, but I do know that they did not contribute to this book. And it shows, especially as you get into uh, the later years of Perkins life. And this is a massive book. It's nearly 500 pages in length. And, um, it goes into great details about uh, Perkins' private life, particularly when he was a young man uh, coming up in the business. Um, because back in the 50s, you know, he was starting, you know, just starting out in films like The Actors and Friendly Persuasion and Fair Strikes Out. And uh, he was a closeted gay man. And uh, he, you know, the, the studios were trying to, you know, that, that, was, that was completely frowned upon back then. Um, and they were trying to hide the fact by putting him on like these sort of setting him up like on these double dates and things like this with other actors and things like that, you know, setting him up with an actress and there'd be another really well-known actor and another actress. So they'd all be together and seen together. So people wouldn't think that, you know, there was something different about Perkins, but to getting into this book. Now I did read this book. Um, and I didn't like it. Um, I don't like it at all, actually. Um, it's got a, just a mean spirit to it. Um, I feel like Charles uh, Wenkoff had an agenda with this book. Of course, when it came out, um, it was after, you know, Perkins had died of AIDS. It was very, you know, big, um, you know, the, the, that was a, uh, no one knew that he had that, or at least anybody in the industry or, you know, his close friends knew about it towards the end. But the fact that, you know, like Rock Hudson, a really well-known, actor had passed away from AIDS. That was huge news. And, uh, I feel like that is the agenda that not so much about the AIDS, but the fact that Perkins was gay. And what did that say about, you know, the fact that he had to hide the fact that he was gay most in his entire life. And I feel like his agenda for this book 
was to talk about all of the different trysts that Perkins had throughout his life with, with men. And that was the main focus of this book, not so much his career. And I knew that, you know, the book was going to talk about both, and I had hoped it would have been an even balance, and it wasn't. It was more about, you know, it, it just, it, there's a very, um, the, the, I just don't feel like Charles Weinkoff really liked Anthony Perkins. And that's what's kind of odd. If you take on the task of writing a book of this length about an actor, that you have a respect for that actor. And I feel like there was no respect for the actor in this. In fact, he paints Perkins as a very mean-spirited, self-centered asshole. And um, for me being a fan of his, I didn't know the man. Um, but I have seen documentaries about him. I have seen you know other people speak about him and talk very nicely about him. Um, I'm sure that you know he I know the infamous stories about you know in Psycho 2, him and Meg Tilly not getting along. Um, but you know and then on Psycho 4, him and McGarris having issues. but you know, I think he was just a passionate man about his work and that's the way I took you know when people were talking about that side of him um but I'm sure that you know he had skeletons in his closet and I'm sure that he was uh, difficult on occasion I mean everybody can be difficult but just the way that it's painted in this book you don't like him um and that's pretty sad and because there's not a lot of biographies on Perkins there's actually one another one that I'm reading right now and that one is called A Haunted Life and um, that one it was actually if I'm not mistaken was published before this one um, so I'm, and so far I'm really liking that one. So yeah, the, one of the biggest problems I had, not only just the tone of the book, but the fact that his career is kind of an afterthought. It's like the, the movies that he did, um, it, it's almost like, um, they're like a couple paragraphs in a really long chapter. The chapters in this are very long. Um, and the, the author just seems more focused on all the men that Perkins had relations with. It just seems like the novel is more of a soapbox for the author to talk about sexual repression and the fear of homosexuality during the 50s and 60s. And it just seems like Charles Weinkoff also enjoys, uh, or just gets off on uh, ridiculing Perkins for his later career choices or some of the film roles that he took when he was completely typecast as a Norman Bates type, which is unfair. Um, and I really just didn't like the, 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 uh, mean-spiritedness of the way that uh, he talks about Perkins in this book. So yeah, with every page I turned in this book, I got angrier and angrier, and I just hated this book. I really wish I didn't own it, but I'm not going to get rid of it. I loved uh, Anthony Perkins, whether he had issues. I mean, he obviously had issues in his personal life, um, and that's understandable given the circumstances of when he was coming up in the Hollywood system, what was going on at the time, the fact that he wasn't able to be himself. And I always have said that that is reflected in all of his performance that he is hiding something, that he is not able to really say how he feels or what's going on in his life. I mean, it, it just, it screams out in so many of his performances. And it makes me sad that this author couldn't focus on what a brilliant actor the man was, even if he was difficult at times or, you know, didn't, you know, fit into the quote unquote, uh, main leading man mold that, uh, was put forth on him, um, at the early stages of his career. Um, I just feel like this author really just wanted to make a statement about gay men in the Hollywood system. Um, and, uh, you know, just the, the repression that was going on. And I just feel like that's what drove this book. And that is my opinion. Somebody else might really enjoy this book. I didn't. And I'm really hoping that A Haunted Life is a better book. So far, like I said, it is a much better book. I feel like that author actually respects Perkins' career and who he was. Um, and this author did not. Um, so that is really all I have to say about Split Image. Um, I'm curious if anybody else has read this book. If you have, uh, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Again, this is my opinion of this biography. As a fan of Tony Perkins, it's an insult to the man, in my opinion. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. And I hope everyone has enjoyed this video. And thanks so much for watching. Take it easy. Stay scared. Peace.